Hey guys, um, okay, 63Z back again. I'm going to make this video about Rise Son of Rome. Okay, I have been playing it on my Xbox One and it is amazing. I've been watching my brother play it while I've been doing homework and it is amazing. Seriously, really worth your time. It is some of the best graphics you'll find on Xbox One at the moment. Um, it is a very unique game. It's one. It's pretty much one of a kind for for what I've seen, at least for what I've seen. Um, okay, you're playing as a guy called Marius. This guy called Marius, and at the at the start, you're fighting out a war, and you're running away. Well, actually, you're protecting the king, the king Nero, and you're telling him about your your story, pretty much about how you've gotten to this point. You're, the whole campaign of this, like I think four or five chapters of the campaign is telling Nero the story of how you got to where you are today. And I'm not going to spoil anything because that's just that's just mean. Like I don't I don't like spoilers. Someone did a Game of Thrones spoiler at my school. I was pretty unhappy about that. Um yeah, but anyway, Game of Thrones was great last night. Anyway, um Rise Son of Rome. Okay. The only spoiler I will give is that Marius's dad dies. But that is the motivation for the whole, the whole game for him. And now I still haven't completed the last two chapters. I've been told they're some of the best chapters that you can get, or some of the best chapters that can happen. Some of the best ones that they're actually some of the, the two best missions in the whole game. In fact, I quite liked the Aqueduct at the moment, but the the um, Minotaur chief he was he was horrible to beat. Took me three goes. Took my brother five goes, and he's usually pretty good at games. Um, the, the detailing on the game is, it's, it's always a fine detailing that people get right. Like, when you're looking at a waterfall, it looks surprisingly real. And when you're running through the water, you get the ripple effect of the water. And when you're looking down at his armor, you can, you can see the great detail of, of the armor, like the Roman armor. It makes you just want to wear one. It just makes you want to wear their armor. It really does. Um, it's all... It's great fine detailing. You can see the hair hair sway like it usually is. The skin's impeccable. It's just impeccable. Every game falls when it comes to moving the lips in time with the words. But, you know, it, that's just something you have to live with, to be honest. Like, no game is going to be perfect, especially on that aspect. But the thing I liked most about it was it's, it's, a, it's pretty much a first-person shooter without the guns. Like... You're running in there using your shield and your sword. There is no special powers. There's like a focus mode thing where everything slows down around you. And you do extra damage for like 10 seconds, 5 seconds maybe. But that's the closest it gets to magical. There's little upgrade things where you can upgrade your executions. So far I've seen about 36, 38 different executions on there. There's some pretty gruesome ones. This is my favourite one where it goes straight up behind the back. Um, and... The thing with them, though, it's very repetitive. It's a very repetitive game, but most games are repetitive. If if you capture me, like Assassin's Creed, you're always you're always on some sort of mission where you have to be stealthy to try and ass assassinate someone or something like that. You have to kill someone special, and you have to get away without being seen. Um, Call of Duty. You're always running in bang, bang, bang. You're always killing people fast and fast and furious kind of thing. Um, Battlefield, Battlefield, you're just, you're scouting around the area going for the most kills you can with the least amount of deaths as possible, using vehicles to your advantage, makes it quite easier. Um, there's, there's another one, Soul Calibur, Soul Calibur's a very repetitive game, it's just literally two people fighting the whole time, like, a lot like, well actually it's probably more like the ripoff of Tekken, sorry if I get that wrong or anything, no haters please. Um, Watch Dogs, I'll, I'll be doing a video on what I already did a video on Watch Dogs, didn't I? Actually, I'll do a video on Watch Dogs, just the online, um, the offline aspects. But, it's a, it's, that game can get pretty repetitive, just like GTA. GTA gets very repetitive. Um, th the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of the games get really repetitive with what they do. And, Rise Son of Rome is no different, but it creates a little bit more fun, so you can do it and not care like 
the other day I was playing it eight hours. I had gotten to I had gotten to where I am now and eight hours didn't feel like that at all. It was like one and a half hours of what it felt like. I had completely gone past like the whole night. I'd got home from school playing, playing, playing. Next thing I know, it's twelve at night. It's just that addictive of a game. The the shield the shield feet I look at the shield and it's pretty cool. Like there's a lot of things I didn't know about Rome except for my friend that's kind of like a Rome historian. But um but yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't know about Rome that it actually had taught me. I don't think that's a good thing. I'm not too, not too sure. I never even knew about Nero. Um, I didn't know about the Praetorians though. Those guys are bastards though. Yeah, I don't really like them. Um, their armor is so cool though. Having a look at their armor, man, just the the detailing on every little bit is so good. But when it gets to the action side of it, when you're fighting people, you're fighting the barbarians. It's it loses its qu quality in detail. Like. There's one mission where you're fighting on a tower, it's not very far in, it's like the second or third mission. You're fighting on a tower with a catapult, and you have to reverse the barbarians that are coming in from Britannia. Like the Britannian barbarians. And you're fighting them, but... Some people just do the fighting, get it over with, and they notice the detailing after the fighting's done. When I'm playing, I look at the detailing, no matter what, like, I'm fighting them. Oh, I look at the detail of the blood splatter, I look at the detail of the head breaking, or... I look at the detailing of the buildings that are right there with the cement. Like, even the cement is beautiful in this game, man. But when you're fighting, it goes blurry. It loses a lot of the detailing. Like, granted, when you're running around and you're jumping everywhere, it doesn't matter because, you know, you turn your head really fast to left and right, you're not going to be able to see much detail anyway. But the thing is... For what it is, it is probably one of the most detailed games I've ever played. I've played Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. I was one of the Battlefield 4 beta people. Like, one of the original beta people. I signed up on the, in the first, like, half an hour to, to play it. And I was playing it within within a little bit of time. That was a great, greatly detailed game. And um, it is just so much better when it comes to detailing. There's little... There's little things you can find around the place, like scrolls and um, all these just little little things that can just add up. If you look at the detailing, like there's little backstories to everything. Like you look at the sword and the details, and then you see a pattern on the sword, and then you see the pattern later on in the game, and you're like, "That's what happened. That's what happened then." Okay. It's just the thing is. Rise, Son of Rome, can definitely be repetitive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. When you're playing as Marius, fighting the Britannians, you don't notice how repetitive it gets, except when you just keep doing the same execution moves and after execution moves. I like to switch it up a bit. At, at one time, I literally just have a whole horde of barbarians just following me, and I'm just doing back rolls around the whole place. But for those that are actually watching this, I thank you for watching. I hope, I hope you've learned a lot about the detailing aspects of the game. It's it's a really good game. It's worth getting. It's it's probably like seventy bucks, I think, at the moment. But if if you're a fan of games that involve fighting and a lot of blood. This is definitely your type of game. You'd want to get it. You'd want to get it soon. Sad sadly for those on PS4 and PS3, you can't get it. Thankfully, because I'm a smart person, well, I like to think I am. I bought Xbox 360 and Xbox 1. I am a Microsoft person forever. And it's an exclusive to that. I'm not sure if it's on PC. I think it's on PC, but I'm not too sure. The not many. If you get with the P if you get PS4, you can't play it. Sorry, this video means nothing to you whatsoever. But if you have an Xbox One, get the game. Get the game. You can't get it on Xbox 360, but you can get it on Xbox One. If you have an Xbox One, get it. It's really worth your time. I I I enjoyed it so much.
Okay. Thank you guys for listening. I'm 63Z. Follow me on Twitter. Like and subscribe down low. Have a great day, guys.